A common narrative in Christian discussion of non-belief is the claim that lack of faith is willful. Even Calvinism, which stresses divine predestination over human freedom, acknowledges that in the reprobate's predetermined rebellion, they act with the full consent of their will and are therefore morally responsible. Yet in my deconversion from conservative Christianity to atheism, one subjective aspect that stood out to me was how losing my faith felt like something I had no choice in. The deconstruction I've subsequently undergone has shed harsh light on many facets of my personal epistemology. A sentiment uttered by many atheists is that if given enough evidence, we would believe. While this may be true, it does not reflect the full situation. I now realize that, much as it jeopardizes the certainty of my own knowledge, I would not need evidence to believe. After all, no phase in my journey of coming to faith, whether in my childhood indoctrination or my adult regeneration, depended on evidence for Christianity. I believed simply because I believed. In fact, I became a presuppositionalist. Furthermore, important as some evidence was in my deconversion, especially internal biblical inconsistencies and the many instances of divine evil, it wasn't really evidence that made me lose my faith either. Ultimately, I just stopped believing. It was like being administered the red pill, once I had awoken and been unplugged from the Matrix, there was no unseeing what I had seen. There was no way I could reconvince myself of biblical truth. If I do not believe there is a teapot circling the sun between the orbits of Earth and Mars, no amount of saying, it's there, will make me actually think it is. I was helpless as my faith fell from me. The deafening silence from any omnipotent, omnibenevolent being to my requests to return to me my lost faith furnished me the most convincing internal argument for God's non-existence. For much as I have enjoyed my deconversion journey, relished the stripping away of religious guilt and shame, and basked in new freedom, and much as I regret the hateful and bigoted things I once believed as a Christian, were I given a button which would return me to my old faith, I miss so much the old, warm love I had for God and his son, and am so daunted by the prospect of navigating difficult conversations with family and friends, that given the right mood I might be tempted to press it. I still sometimes feel like Cypher, wishing he had taken the blue pill. While he knows the steak doesn't exist, he experiences it as juicy and delicious, and realizes that ignorance is bliss. Thus, even now, part of me wishes I still had my faith, and this was even more true during my latter religious years as that faith slipped from me. Calvinists will argue my belief was not genuine, perhaps that even the lingering desire for faith was selfish, not spiritual. I can only speak to the sincerity of my experience. If Calvinism were true and I was a reprobate, I figured I might as well enjoy my earthly life before being thrown into hell for eternal torture. And whether or not the universe was deterministic, fatalistic, or allowed ontologically self-determining free will, I wanted to believe and couldn't. This was one of the many reasons why the lingering dread of hell and retribution lost its power over me. Was a just, loving God really going to torture me in hell for eternity? because I did not believe in him, when I had spent so long begging him to make me believe in him. The deaf heaven I had long troubled with my bootless cries had at last turned out to be empty.